now for more insight into the upcoming Winter Olympics in Beijing. Mike Baco joins us live via Skype. He's sports editor at DailyNational.com. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Rochelle. Now, obviously, safety is front and center this Olympics. We're expecting some of the strictest rules in terms of COVID protocols for Beijing 2022. How do you expect them to compare to Japan in 2021? Well, right off the bat, the biggest thing is that all participants need to be vaccinated. That was not the case with Tokyo. To looking at the U.S. contingent that was sent over for the summer games, 100 of the 600 participants that were sent over were unvaccinated. So that will certainly not be the case this go around. Vaccination is required. They have made some dispensations for particular medical needs, and that's going to be on a case by case basis. But if those people are allowed to come and are allowed to participate, they're going to face very, very strict quarantining up to 21 days inside of that Olympic village. And what other sort of key differences will athletes see? Well, the biggest key difference that they're going to see is not only being vaccinated, but daily rapid tests are going to be uh, instituted, not only for the people that are unvaccinated, but for the vaccinated athletes, for the training staff, and for all of the support staff. So that is going to be a huge change. The Beijing Olympic Committee is not taking any chances in terms of getting derailed. They are creating this, this loop around all of the athletes. It's going to be very strict. The Tokyo Games athletes, even in their quarantine period, were allowed to mingle and to go have uh, social events. We're allowed to have dinner together uh, because they were all inside of that bubble together. That's not going to be the case this go around with the Beijing Games. They are going to be separated. Uh, different uh, athletes are going to be separated from even their own teammates. So within the same countries, they're going to be separated, let alone with the other participants that are, that are taking place. Certainly not the uh, Olympic ideal when you think about those Olympic villages that have been created for years past. So then what did we learn about what happened with cases from Japan's Summer Olympics and the need for enhanced COVID protocols? Well, that's where when you get into the statistics, it gets a little bit dicey. Japan was already inside of their, their red zone. They were code red in terms of the number of cases. Their vaccination rates were very low at the time, so there was much opposition to actually housing the games there. So what happened after the games, their vaccination rates were continuing to go up. I think at that point when the games were over, they were vaccinating upwards of a million people a day, which was great. But they also saw a doubling of their COVID cases. So can it be specifically tied to the Olympic Games taking place there? Could be. It's not 100% certainty, but their rates did go up. So the Beijing organizers are certainly keeping their eyes on that and saying we cannot have that happen within our walls. And that's what they're trying to do. Now, it's interesting because Russia's Olympic chairman says he doesn't expect young athletes to have to quarantine for three weeks if they're unvaccinated. Does that fall in line though, with expectations from Chinese officials? Well, right now, the Chinese officials are saying no, but there is a what we'll call a gentleman's agreement among all of the nations in terms of some of these minors that are coming over. Because much like with the Tokyo Games, not everyone is eligible for vaccines or have it re readily available. That's why it was not mandatory for the Tokyo Games. So when you think about minors and you think about minors in Russia, it has not been approved for them. So to, to make it so that they need to be vaccinated to participate in the Games when it's not passed in Russia for minors to be vaccinated, that's where it gets a little bit dicey. We're not talking about hundreds or even thousands of athletes that are coming over. This is where the case-by-case -case basis comes in, and this is where the Russian Athletic Commissioner uh, is making those statements in terms of not expecting it. There'll be some level of quarantining, I'm sure, right. but it won't be as stringent as 21 days. And that context is important, obviously. Um, I want to shift gears now and talk about this ongoing trend that we've seen to make Olympic venues greener and to a smaller carbon footprint. Talk about China's efforts and the venues being reused from the Summer Games of 2008. The, the venues being reused from the Summer Games of 2008. And one of the things that this Olympic Committee has really gone to great lengths to do is, is to have plans for how the venues are going to be used after. So a lot of the green effect comes in in terms of just keeping these venues going. You think about past Olympic venues, you think about World Cup venues, these huge, massive stadiums. They can't really be repurposed for too many things, but because the Chinese government and the athletic commissioners and the school systems have put so much emphasis and effort into training new athletes and trying to grow winter, winter sports into a multi-billion dollar industry there, a lot of these venues 
ice skating, uh, ski jumping, a lot of these different venues are going to be repurposed for tourist destinations and are going to be repurposed for educational venues to continue this trend of trying to teach winter sports to the Chinese population. I certainly like to see those legacy buildings not just come and go. Thanks so much. Mike Baker there, sports editor at dailynational.com.